everybody. <laughs> That's always fun. I was like, this isn't working for me. <laughs> it's okay. This How is my way of getting are, yeah. rid of my chin. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good way. So. Uh, uh, you don't have a gin, by the way. You're oh good. no, I do. <laughs> nah, you're good. You're good. I do. Uh, so how have you been? Fine. How have you been? <laughs> I don't like this year. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Look, I'm not at a happy place. I'm not gonna lie. Like you know, I, out of the three-ish weeks that we so far had from January, I've been sick on two, so. I'm not happy with this year so far. I'm not gonna lie. Things it's it's only January. Things are uh, subject to change. Yeah, I did book the first comic con for this year, so that's, well, there you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? Oh, I guess I could do that. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I am Katie, and that is the hat wearing Lily Kay. No, it's it's not always gonna be a hat, but uh, my no. hair is growing. you are. <laughs> Really wrapping. I've just realized the earrings are matching the hat and you've got a whole thing going on today. Of course, as always. And, you know, the cap is here. Well, that well, one's just always yeah, there. That's, it's... it's always here. Of course, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you have to give respect to the captain. Uh, <laughs> did I ever tell you then uh, what are my plans for this one? I didn't know you had more plans. Oh, I had. Did you? I think yes. you might have done, actually. I, I just uh, don't know what they are. <laughs> I, I'm going to get um, uh, Sam's wings. That's... Right, I think I think I remember you telling me that. Yeah, but not not now because uh, my tattoo artist is is having another baby, so she's off, obviously. Good for uh, her. Good Congratulations! For her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's great news, but it means that I just have to wait a bit longer. Uh, for now, uh, I am I am torn between two ideas. Uh, because I'm getting the tattoo in March, uh, and I'm torn between uh, either Wanda and Vision, uh, reaching. Uh, like you know, like 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 this somehow. I don't, I don't know how to how to show yeah, it. Like, I know. Like, I, I somehow think I got, like this. I got, I got the idea. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 have you know what is love if not what is grief is if not, not love, love persevering, persevering. Uh, around it. That's that's idea one. But I really want the Spider Man one. So I'm I don't know which one to go in. But this this hand is is all for Marvel. So you know. It's, <laughs> I need, I need, I will have space for it. <laughs> I just okay. don't know which one to start with. I will decide at one point, I promise. Um, but uh, yes, I don't know how, where, where, why did we come to tattoos? Because I was, no, I was talking about your earrings and your ah, hat. Yes, that's right. That's right. But uh, I will ask my usual question. What did you watch this week? Well, um, I do have a couple of things. Uh, Euphoria just started back up oh, yeah, after right. about two and a half years of not being around. Jesus um, Christ. It, 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 the original series aired in 2019 and it is now 2022. So it's been, been about two That's and a half years. a long ago. time. It was a while. And um, uh, uh, it is, it's it's very good. It's The trouble with it is, is, and I forgot that this was the feeling I got from the first season that, where I was watching it. Like, are these is this what teenagerhood is actually like for a lot of like, Americans. I'm, it's yeah. fucking insane. I'm not gonna lie, In uh, the reason I never watched it, because I, I'd never seen the series, is because it feels too depressing. It is, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, everybody just seems to be going through a bad time. Yes. <laughs> Always. And a lot of it, I'm not gonna lie to you, is just bad decisions. We love them. Well, some of bad decisions, but mm. I do like the characters. I find them all to be very interesting, um, and the the look of the show is very interesting. Not gonna lie, if this isn't really your thing, I'd understand completely. But it does feel a lot of like softcore porn at times, because there's a lot of fucking going on. Hmm. <laughs> it is. Uh, hmm. I'm watching it like. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Interesting, interesting. I don't but know I if it's my thing. Yeah, no, I, it's fair, but I, I think the stuff that they do get into that's really good is like, um, as a really wide selection of like people in it. Um, although somebody did point out no Asian people in the entire show, which is very bizarre. Um, oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's, that's um, weird. But there you go. Um, I'm sure they can fix that pretty easily, considering they've got like a really wide variety of other sorts of people oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In, in the show. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's certainly interesting. I think the Christmas specials, they did a Christmas and New Year special 
in 2020. Yeah. I remember correctly. Um, which were very good, but I think they were very good because they were very focused on um, Zendaya's character, which was uh, Rue. And then they did another one, I think a week later, or maybe it was, I can't remember. It was, they were close together anyway. Mm. They did one for after Hunter Schaefer's character, who is Jules. Mm. Um, and that one was, uh, Hunter Schaefer's one was particularly, I thought, incredibly well written. I think partly because she helped write it. Um, oh, okay. Because uh, it, it tells, she goes through, she's, it's basically her in therapy post mm. the events of the, uh, the first season. Uh, it's like her first time in therapy. Um, but she goes through like her, her whole host of emotions to, to do with the stuff. And then she also, there's a lot of very specific stuff to do with her relationship to, because she's a trans woman. It's her relationship to her taking hormones and whether and her relationship to gender and all this sort of stuff, which I thought was, it, it feels as is the way it does with things that are, like, often come from, you know, people who live the experiences feels very lived in mm. and, and very true to life. Mm. Um, so those are, those are good. It's just, we're two episodes into this new season and I was like, oh my God, I forgot that this, this show really is quite a lot. And they're all teenagers uh, in a way that makes me just kind of want to tear my hair out. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I think I, I had to realize, like, even though I love Breaking Bad, even though I love Requiem for a Dream, I just can't, I can't do drug addict movies and TV shows. It just makes me incredibly upset, especially knowing that it's a choice you make uh, to take these drugs and whatnot. Like that is a little. It's 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 addiction is a it's a very hard disease. It is, um, but uh, you know, it's it's like I just can. It's, it's I, very. I can't. <laughs> it's it's yeah. I I don't subscribe to that sort of it's really part of the reason why i hate i mean we don't really need to get into this discussion on our film and tv podcast no 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 um uh the um way that we police the the whole war on drugs and stuff like that the reason that stuff doesn't work is because we're not giving help to people who need it as opposed to um it it is the sense of punishing rather than trying to help Mm. and the more that we do that the more that we encourage that kind of i don't like the word encourage either It, it feels um like I'm blaming people. I don't. I don't. I'm not, I don't. Oh no, no. I don't. Uh, look, it's it's not that I I blame anyone or anything. I watched plenty of movie and read plenty about it. But then I just think that I just can't really deal with it. Like you know, it, it's, it's a difficult topic. Yeah, and it, it's not. It's not. <laughs> not a fun one. Nor should it be. Really. No. Um, it is. I think they they do an interesting. I think the one that like, like I said the the Christmas special that they did with Rue specifically where it's just her talking about, she relapses, not to spoil too much about it, but she relapses at the end of the first season mm. after um, uh, some some stuff happens. And it's her talking to her sponsor um, uh, about the relapse and like her emotions are behind it and why he thinks that this is going happening, why she's doing this. And I think the way that they, it's difficult, the way that they portray it in the show is because it's so stylized. There is a worry that I feel, I, I do find sometimes that this is, almost too glamorous but it's it does also show the other side of it where it's just horrifying yeah like everything that it comes from it is is awful and all this sort of stuff so yeah it's it's a it's 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 a difficult one it's not yeah it's not particularly a happy show no. nor are the people in it particularly happy but um I, I liked i did like the first season quite a lot and i'm interested to see where this goes now, now that I, 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 I was paying attention to you, by the way, I was just look, looking for a movie while you were talking. Mm. Uh, the, I would say that the only movie that I really liked uh, in this, and I would even say that I would watch it again, because, for example, Requiem for a Dream, I can watch it again. I can. It just I, it, it upsets I, me so much. So did much. I tell you that? I Because in my head, Requiem for a Dream, for some reason, lives in the same sort of space as eternal sunshine of a spotless mind and i for the longest time had them mixed up in my head so i went to go looking for eternal sunshine and ended up starting to watch requiem for a dream and i was like this is not the movie i thought it was (laughs) and i didn't end up finishing it because i was like i I got not very far into it and i was just like this is far too depressing it is very (laughs) depressing i'm in the mood for it's a very beautifully done movie but it's just 
it's too much. It's too much once again. One of Jared Leto's best performances to this day, by the way. Uh, but this one, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I can Beauty- see the beautiful boy. Yeah. Beautiful boy. with That's Steve- we, we just talked about him, uh, Timothy. Uh, t- I can't say oh, his name. Oh, yes. This is the one with um, uh, Brian Cranston, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. he plays his dad. No, it's Steve Carroll. Sorry. It, sorry, it Steve, Steve Carroll. Carroll. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry. I, 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 I know exactly the film. Yes. I just for some reason thought it was... Uh, I, I don't know. I was I, I watched this when I was sick at one time, which is pretty accurate because I am, you know, not feeling too well <laughs> again. Uh, and I found it really, really good. Uh, like, Shame. you know, it's it's so beautifully done. Uh, I was, you know, I, I was there uh, for the father and, and you know, it was I, I could understand the guy as well. And, and I loved how they did the movie because I think they used both of their books. Because it's a true story. Yeah. Uh, uh, they use both of their books to to make the movie. So they they like how they did it with um, uh, Julia and Julia uh, for the Julia Child uh, biopic. So that's that's how they did it here as well. Uh, and I I think it's it's a very very good movie. I I hmm. really liked it. And I thought it was better reviewed. Oh, it just I found it's like a sixty seven percent. And I thought it was. Um... I mean the the other the reaction to it like elsewhere it seems all pretty high. Yeah, I just yeah, thought yeah. I I thought critically speaking I thought it had been better reviewed than I that. I didn't even check to be honest. <laughs> um, I was just curious. Of, yeah. yeah. Pardon me. No worries. Uh, yeah. Um, so there's Euphoria, and then on completely the other end of the fucking spectrum, oh. I watched Encanto. <laughs> yes, you did. I know. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I, 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 I was, it was one of my evenings on, on, on the couch and I got, got into my little bed on the sofa and I was like, right, I can either watch Encanto or Dune. <laughs> and, and, and it was like uh, half yes. 11. Yes. And I was like, I think I'm too tired to watch Dune right now. <laughs> so I will put stick on Encanto. We um, talk about boo. No, 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 no. Let's not go too far. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be stressed. <laughs> True. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, I really liked it. And I thought, you know, the music is obviously very good. It's been a while since I've watched a Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a Disney movie. Um, not, they, they, I'm not saying that in any kind of derogatory or like particularly um, affectionate way. It was just like, I forgot that this is what Disney movies were like. And it was nice. Um, yeah. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it though, because I had Louis was watching it the other day whilst um, Louise's song was was playing. I don't remember what it's called now. I haven't looked at the uh, the track listing. Which one? But uh, Louise's song about her being strong. It's like uh, sur- uh, uh, surface pre- pressure. Okay, there you go. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I got it. But I was <laughs> That's like, my I, I, sorry. It's. I think it's one of. I think it's my favorite as well. But also, um, I just turned. I just like poked my head around the door, but it's just like you can tell that Lin Manuel Miranda wrote the music for this yes. movie, can't you? Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, the and I love is, it. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I, I I cried my eyes out on that movie. Like, oh yeah, I mean I cried. <laughs> I was like, yep, destroyed. I think, <laughs> I think I hit close I think, to home. Yes. I, I think I tweeted it um, afterwards. So I just was like quietly hangs up hat in the I cried at Encanto gallery. Yes. <laughs> But it was like the way I was like, it was like I was crying and then in the way I was doing because I was lying there and I was just like, like, this is very typical. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, oh, God damn it. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh... Like, I guess this is happening now. I'm forcibly emoting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... it was very fun. I'm glad that I, I sat down and actually watched it properly because people were talking about it so much and Good. I do love Bruno. It's like, I dude, love Bruno. it's just like, yeah, sometimes you just want to go hide in the walls. Yes. Ah, oh, Bruno is the best. Uh, goodies. Uh, some relatable content right there. Nice. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, I, anyway, I, what do you watch? I have no idea, to be honest. <laughs> I, watch, I watch the journals, that's for sure, because it's out on Disney Plus. So I obviously yeah. watched it again and I cried my eyes out when Gil Gilmerstein. I, I will never forgive them for them, like, ever. Um, and then... Um, ah... <laughs> It's I've been watched... trending on Tumblr for the, like the past week. Oh yeah, uh, it's been trending on Twitter as well. <laughs> it's just like it, some people are making gifts, and uh, mum, my mum watched it, and we had mm. a big old conversation about it. Um, yeah. and I, I talked about how I thought it was like a 
sort of flawed in like a very beautiful way mm-hmm. uh, and how I thought it was dealing with a lot of very big yeah. themes that it didn't quite know how to grapple with properly and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, uh, I pointed out the fact that um, I, I feel like at this point we have gotten into spoiler territory, but if, <laughs> you know, the moment Icarus, I pointed out this, like, yes, Icarus flew into the sound and my mom went, I didn't put that together. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, look, I'm not the only one who doesn't put these things together. <laughs> it's not that it's not that obvious. It is a bit, but it's a bit on the nose. But I still like it. Like I mean, even it, the was second... the, it was the part in the movie I went. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> even uh, I mean, even now it's it, it was my second time watching it, and and even now I just don't mind it. To be fair, like you know, I don't care. Too much. It just it was. It I didn't just... care about him too much at all. So. <laughs> I mean, neither did I. Yeah, I found him to be very bizarre as a character. Yeah. But like, in a way that was, I guess, kind of interesting. I don't know. Like, yeah. We've talked about this before. We, 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 have a, we have a review about the Eternals that yes. you can go watch. You can, you can go and watch it. And before I forget, because I keep forgetting to do this every time we do one of the recordings, don't forget to subscribe and hit the <laughs> like button. <laughs> I will. I we will have to Follow come up with yes, please. <laughs> we um, should do it at the end, really. Yeah, and everywhere, movie. everywhere. That I just watched a bunch of videos, and basically they said that do it at the beginning, and then the end, and in the middle. And I was like, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> so do I just yell at people to fucking subscribe? Hit the bell. <laughs> Hit the bell. <laughs> uh, I don't. I. I remember I watched something, but I had no you idea. You having the same sort of week that I had last week when you were like, "What did you watch?" And I went, "Nothing." <laughs> No, I did watch something, and I, I, I think I liked it as well. But I, I it, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not gonna come you, to me. No, you were tweeting about game. That was, that was not. Oh my god, yes. You want to talk about that then? <laughs> I must say this: I am very happy with my game because I finally have House of Ashes, which is a, a part of uh, um, the Dark Pictures anthology series, which I very much love. Mm-hmm. Um, By the same people who made Until Dawn. Yes. For those who may not know. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there's there's a returning character called the Curator. And the last time around, when uh, we were playing Little Hope, uh, he was acting that like he didn't remember me and he didn't know me, and that really hurt my feelings. And I was like, Oh my God! I even tweeted about it <laughs> and in this one he's like we met before and i i, I was like ha oh. <laughs> yeah, look i was at a very emotional place and i was very happy <laughs> with that. all right <laughs> it's a very good game i didn't get too far so far but uh i, I pretty much I, I i like it it would be a good movie by the way I, it's not gonna come to me what I watch. If if it does, then I will just write it in the comments or something. I did put something, but it's I don't put it up at the bottom of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, was... of course, was... of course, oh. of course, it came to me. I rewatch Horrible Bosses because I love that movie. <laughs> that is exactly the kind of movie I could never get into. It is like the exact type of comedy that I just can't get on board. And like, I know the cast is good as well. There's like people in it that I really like, but it's like I can't do that kind of like <laughs> comedic, like awful guy thing. I can't do it. It just makes me go, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's completely fair, but uh, there's one scene in there that I just can't get over. It's it's. Uh... It's not spoiler. It's uh, when they go to uh, Colin Farrell's house uh, because, you know, obviously the plot is that they want to kill their bosses and they come up with this great idea that they can just break into their houses and, you know, find something that they can use against them and make it seem like it's an accident. And these two idiots, (laughs) they find like a big pot full of cocaine (laughs) and one of them drops it and it gets all over them. (laughs) <laughs> you know they are fine for a few seconds and then suddenly it just kicks in and one of them starts to talk really fast the other is just all over the place and just sweating and everything <laughs> they are trying to put it back together like you know we weren't here <laughs> i don't know i just love it i just can ah oh. and i love like yeah. the jamie fox as as motherfucker jones is just just it, awesome. yeah it's yeah. just one of those movies that lives in that in in that like American comedy genre that mm. I just don't get on board with. <laughs> Where I'm just sort of like, this is not 
But this is actively not funny to me. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. We we all love different comedies, but I really like this one in particular. Like it's uh, well, the second one, especially with Christoph Waltz as well. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. I really like. I them. think Adam Scott is in one of them, right? I uh, uh, in the second one. Yeah, because it's like I love yes. Adam Scott because obviously I love Fox yeah. and Recreation. Trouble is, he has such a he plays assholes all the time, and I don't like seeing him play such a dick because he's so lovely as Ben. Fair, fair. But, but he's it... like he clearly gets like such a kick out of playing that kind of dick whole character, and I'm like, I did this. I don't want be nice again. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get to today's theme which is uh if you could choose a book uh to turn into a movie or a tv show which book would it be and why mm. and we're gonna go with you first because you i i so here's the, here's the fun thing i'm yes. gonna show everybody i made notes you yes. can't see what they know are because uh, which is good because i'm gonna talk to them but i made like actual <laughs> i'm very proud is, of you i'm genuinely I, i'm really like this is a concept um uh, and I've talked about this book already. I think mm -hmm. I mentioned it last week. Yes. So I want to talk about it properly. Yes. Um, but before I do that, I just want to point out that the other thing that I would have wanted to get into an adaptation, but does have a, have an adaptation, is my background. Because this is the new, like, full cut. I've made it all of them. Mal's not there. Yeah. And somebody else isn't there. And I can't remember who. But it's like, it's most of the it's cast. And I'm like, it's pretty. Yeah, pretty, pretty right there. Right in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's him. Okay. Yes. And it's standing next to our new Waylon, who I'm so excited about. Lily and I have already spoken many we times <laughs> about how she's not on board with Nikolai, no. but I'm so on board. I'm not on like, board with Nikolai. Perfect. I love it. No. No. You're going to see. You're going to see. You'll be convinced. She doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't know the full extent of Nikolai yet. She hasn't read King of Scar. Oh, God. <laughs> I get around to it, I promise. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I'm, I'm, uh, coming. Tamar and 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 Tonya are, are were very unexpected good. but incredible. Very good. Though you know, I checked them out. I was like, yep, perfect. Have you seen the video of um of Lewis Tan doing the that? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I was just sitting there going like, my word. Yep, brilliant. I love it's it. It's gonna be incredible. Yep, I love it already. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. Um. Uh, yeah. There. There you go. Also, um, Daisy here is uh, who is who is, is Jenya who in yes. in the first season has been updated. He, she and oh, that's the other one. Callahan's not here, but that's um, oh, yeah, Mateus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Daisy, who plays, it's wait no, Danielle, Daisy, and Callahan are all going from um, recurring to regular, regular characters yeah, in yeah, season yeah. two, which I'm so excited about because it means we're moving it, we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> yep, they're very good. Very good indeed. Uh, although, hey. although Genya was badly in the second book. True, but like I mean, clearly they. Yeah. Well, they're changing stuff up, so you know, fair. I mean, she's, obviously, she's very, she's very much in the other book. Yeah, Ben Boss <laughs> is badly like Ben Boss' character, the Darkling, is badly in the second book as well. So you know. Yeah, because everybody thinks he's dead. Yeah, uh, but he's not. Yeah, he's not. Um, but yeah. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, yeah, I'm just, I'm very excited. Very excited. Everybody. Let, let's get into your idea. Right. Then. So I have, I have, I have my props here because I was like, oh, I want to show. So, <laughs> this is the watchmaker. I oh, have yes. mentioned it a couple of times. You did. This was recommended to me by, I would, yeah, I think I mentioned this before as well. A veritable cult of people on a Discord I'm part of. I mean, there was a lot of them. They just came in. It was like, man, I was thinking about reading some more books and about five of them crawled out of the wood to be like, have you read the watchmaker of Billy <laughs> There's a little group. They're all very nice, and I've had a lot of fun being able to talk about this with them. Um, but I, yes, this I got this for Christmas. And along with this, it's sequel. Oh my god, it's green! Jesus <laughs> Christ! It's <laughs> like, oh! I, I kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> now your face went. <laughs> just... <laughs> you can see it real. It's though. so good. <laughs> Did that make memes? <laughs> there you yeah. go. Beautiful. That's just perfect. <laughs> it's it's perfect. I love it. Okay, uh, yes. yes. Anyway, this is the this is the sequel. That's the book, yes. Yeah, it's not helping. Um it's but okay. I'm not talking about that one today because this is this is this has a plot that's way more complicated than the first book, so I'm just gonna talk about this one. Mm. Um this is 
uh, it's by Natasha Crowley. Um, it is about uh, 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 just a sort of, it's just a guy. His name is Daniel Stevenson. He works for the government as a telegraphist in 19, no, sorry, 1883, I think it begins. Let me just double check. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dates, I'm very good at dates. It you was are. terrible. Dates, I'm pretty decent at. Huh. Um, but he he works for a um, he works for he works as a telegraphist for the for the home office. Huh. Uh, and then one day he turns he comes back home to find just a little pocket watch on his pillow, and nobody knows how it got there, and it won't open, and it's all a big mystery um, about it, and um, nobody really know, nobody quite believes him um, about like. It, somebody breaking into his place and then just leaving something behind. Uh. Um, so he kind of has to just sort of be sit there and go, well, this is fucking weird, but I guess this is uh, a watch I have now. Um, and then the watch um, uh, opens one day and then suddenly makes this like alarm sound. Uh, and as it does, it basically saves his life from being, for him being blown up by a bomb in a, in a terrorist um, attack that happens on Scotland Yard. Um, and it's a it's this whole mystery thing. There's 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 lots of like it's very sort of slightly steampunk. It's a bit it's like Victorian London, but make it a little bit like steampunky. Mm. Um, and not in like a really obvious and like well look at you know in the sort of way you think of I think steampunk. But um, it's it's a little bit there's there's some like interesting sort of magic stuff and the watchmaker. The titular watchmaker of Filigree Street um, is a is a is a gentleman called Maury uh, Keaton Maury. I don't actually know if I'm saying his name correctly because um, he's a he's a, Jap- a Japanese gentleman, okay. um, and I I don't know if it's like pronounced Keita, but it's how I've been reading it. So mm. if I'm incorrect, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's how I, it's how I've been reading it this entire time. It's K E I T A. So in my head is Keita. It might be Keita. Um, Oh, because he's, oh no, now I'm questioning myself. I read through, like, so many stories, it doesn't matter. This is not an important thing. It's a. Th- no. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Just put that on the side. Anyway, yes. um, I would love to talk more about some of the plot stuff, but I also really want people to read it. So if, like, if anybody's interested in it beyond that description, like, you know, suggestion of stuff, um, it's, it's a good book. It's very, it's very funny and, and, um, it's got a lot of very interesting plot stuff in it and, and the dialogue's very great. But um, in, if you don't want to hear any more about the plot, I'm about to spoil something slightly big. So you should mute now. But I'm going to tell you, and unfortunately, you're going to just have to hear it. That's fine. Um, the thing about it is that Maury, who is the watchmaker, is clairvoyant. And mm. I think it plays in a way that's very, very interesting. Um uh, so, but like, it just the whole thing as I was reading it was like, I am pulling this apart and thinking about how I'd put it together as like a series. Mm. Um, so, so I you have would a make a series of, from it. I'd make it for the first one. Yes, it needs to be a series. There's a lot of stuff that happens in it, um, and it, it definitely wouldn't take place. I mean, you, I think technically speaking, you could probably make it into a movie, but I don't think it would be nearly as good. Mm. Um, it's not like it's it's not the it's not a very big book. But I think enough stuff happens in it that you could make a little mini sort of series. I don't know how many episodes you'd make out of it. I'd have to be more specific in my um, in my note taking. This is a lot of. This is literally. I sat down and was just like, I need to put some stuff down, um, and then I ended up writing so many more points than I thought I was going to. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hang on a second. I found I found a point here. Yes. Um, and I haven't finished it. <laughs> I started it with although the universe in which these characters inhabit is very rich and full of interesting science slash magic, and then there's just nothing else. <laughs> I'm like, but what me? But what? Anyway, so basically, my thoughts are, uh, in terms of like production and stuff, I think you should cast the main two characters with people unknown actors i think it would be i think because i I'm, I'm not very good at coming up with like fan casting for stuff anyway mm. but i think that with this i haven't there's nobody that i can come up with that, that would fit these characters well enough or like um specifically enough mm-hmm. for the the roles that they would be playing 
so I would want to find find some like new people um, for them. Uh, and then I wrote height and important factor. Maury's comparatively short compared to Daniel. <laughs> okay, fair. Um, uh, there's a the the other part of the novel is that there is a woman. Her name is Grace. She is a scientist. Mm -hmm. um, she comes becomes quite embroiled in 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 sort of the there's a sort of whirlwind of stuff that go, turn, comes around because it's all it's like they say the plot is very kind of ev um, event heavy yeah. because of the way that Maury essentially manipulates events because he is a clairvoyant. Um, he's not like, oh, clairvoyant. He just, like, I like the way that they do it. He, she does it in the book. He just remembers the future the same way that people would remember the past. Okay. So it's like he has memories of the future and then he kind of, he has like a sense of like so many different other possibilities about to happen. So he can kind of mold events to kind of take, so that certain things will happen. Um, it uh, means he's a very interesting character because he does yeah. some very morally questionable stuff. Um, but uh, it, oh man, uh, and then but Grace becomes quite kind of embroiled in the whole thing. Uh, the three of them have like this interesting. What's the word? Um, combative, I guess, relationship in places. Um, uh, but she, I think that she could be somebody who was like, like a known actor. I don't have any duty to, uh, to mind. So if anybody's read the book and has any ideas, please, I'd, I'd love to hear them. Um, but I, I, she is also one of the points that I think I would probably rewrite a little bit from the the story because I think she's one of the only like prominent female characters in the narrative. And she's not very... And I don't think that women have to be likable and everything. That's, you know, that's the thing. But I think that her motives aren't entirely clear, and I find that she becomes like so antagonistic at places that it's like I think we could do a better job of making her a bit more nuanced, essentially, um, mm. in in like a wider, a, a larger um, narrative plot. Um, uh, yeah, what did I, as I said? She'd need a bit of rewriting as her characterization in the book as one of the only female characters. It makes her less than sympathetic which isn't bad, but needs a stronger basis than she's given in the book. That's what I wrote, yeah, because it needs, mm. it just needs a bit more kind of like stuff put behind it. Yeah. Like a, bit of, a better understanding of her like motivation okay. for some of the stuff that she does later on in, in the narrative, um, which can also be, um, yes, I wrote perhaps by slightly pushing her fear of just how do dangerous Maury can be with his gift. Um, so that she kind of have a sense of maybe she has a point to like any of her actions that she does later on in the narrative. Um, uh, and then I, I, I pointed out uh, the importance of characters being narrative tools, not people, because I think that there's something that people often get caught up in. They, they're so important. They're so focused on like making their characters as rounded as possible, which is a very important thing, but also characters. And I think that audiences also forget this are narrative tools yeah. above anything else. They represent certain things within a narrative. So they aren't meant to be like paragons of morality. Mm -hmm. So they you really need to like base really, you know, get that that sense of like this is she what does she represent to the wider narrative and like the themes of said narrative and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Um on the more practical side, I was saying you need to hire a really good production team because there's a lot of stuff because he's a watchmaker and he has a lot of very, very intricate um clockwork stuff. Mm. In. So he makes like clockwork birds, and there's a pretty great, like prominently features on here a little clockwork octopus Aww. whose name is Katsu, um, who we love very dearly. He's the only one with a brain cell in the book. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's literally a, he's literally made of clockwork. Um, uh, but like I think the idea is like I think the easy thing to do would be to skimp in a set in a sense. I don't want to like I don't I don't mean to talk down on like. The VFX department and, and the amazing things that they can do in VFX now, but I think making something practical, almost like puppet like, mm -hmm. would be very. I think because he's so like, um, there's something so domestic about him in the in the in the environment that they they have him in. He he's very he's got such a personality to him. I think that I think you could do very interesting things with like a physical model, and then you know maybe a couple of bits and pieces where like he has to be like digitally put in and all that sort of stuff. Um, but he, I think you you need to like really make it 
especially as I think the world that this this inhabits is incredibly tangible um, when you when you're reading about it because it feels like I think that now like period dramas can often feel a bit sort of like this is a period drama you know where it doesn't feel like this is a place that people actually lived in but these books feel very lived like it, it just feels like this is the sort of thing that's happening at this time and people are just mm-hmm. living within it mm-hmm. and I think that that's something that you need to so you need to you know really good like sense of like place and 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 the world building around it um yeah what was where was I at um ba, 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 ba. Uh, I suggested a balance between like this wider plot that's going on because like like it like I said at the beginning it is a bomb goes off in Scotland Yard which he because he basically literally it like a wine goes off and he ends up going outside and then the bomb goes off and it's like yeah. saves his life um and, and then it kind of like goes from this sort of like oh this like started off with a terrorist plot and then it becomes sort of like the domestic and like sort of just interpersonal mm-hmm. in the middle and you kind of forget that there's this sort of like other plot stuff going on like there's wider um sort of stuff uh and then by the end then something at the end of it kind of comes back into place but i would mesh the two of those things together a bit more yeah so that you have a sense of like this um there's uh radicalization going on in mm-hmm. in these communities especially this sort of like mini this small like mini tokyo Mm-hmm. um area um and and all this sort of stuff um which leads me on to i think the most important part which is a balanced writer's room you that you the people you hire to write this you need to get like a like a wide you need to get like actual japanese writers i think writing parts of the dialogue in japanese would be incredibly important as well because there's a lot of like I think the way she writes it is very interesting because you you read everybody's dialogue in english but it's suggesting the way that it, she often talks about characters' accent, accents mm-hmm. and like how people, certain people they, it has, speak in even other languages. Um, so it's like making it like a fully multilingual show would be, I think, incredibly rich for the world. Um, and, you know, it, because there's so much Japanese culture kind of built into the whole thing because it's through uh, like Mori and the way that he inhabits like a certain like place in London. And um, I think yeah it's one of the say like, yeah you want to get people in who actually can write about the stuff from personal experience mm-hmm. and have a, a better it, like i just you would have just avoid uh an all white writers room at all costs is my <laughs> thing yeah representation of it full and proper good and bad told from the horse's mouth is whatever because there's like there's a lot of like talk about like certain things being you know it, it i don't want to suddenly rose tint glass the, mm-hmm. the the sort of japanese uh, area of london that they have it's like this needs that within the narrative it, it, it talks a lot about like these you know some incredible parts of, of the culture and these other parts that are like nationalism that is a big part of um some of the sort of more plotty parts mm-hmm. of the narrative and all this sort of stuff anyway that's most of what i have um the only other thing is that there's a little girl in it called six who um, you get to see more in the later books, but she's very clearly autistic, and I would cast her as an autist. I would cast an autistic actress to play her, and that's the that's my main, my final yeah. and main point. Nice, but yeah, nice, nice. This is I'm, I honestly, I'm, there there is such a big part of me that wants to like properly go through this with like a like a pen and like stop <laughs> making tabs and like trying to figure out like what where what episode would start there, what what would you put in you know no cards on like court board it's like no I, I don't have any rights to this at all um nor will i probably ever but um just as a like a fun huh? little mental exercise you can still do it <laughs> yeah why not why not i likes it yeah i, I would watch this show that's it's read this book it would be it's I, very good look, Katie. <laughs> i know but like <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it so I much. will have one point. I, I think it, it's it's going to be like, you know, I have... I'm not saying you have to watch it really anytime soon, but like, also just for the audience, please join the Katsu Club. Fine. Uh, <laughs> I have such a massive backlog of books that uh, it's, I'm very ashamed by it. Uh, so I, I literally had to stop myself to buy another trilogy that just caught my eye and I was like, no! <laughs> like, no! Leave it! So I left it.
in. I'm very yeah. proud of myself. One more thing. Yes. Because I bought this specifically for that. This is a, a selection of short stories. One of them is written by the same author who wrote this book with the, st- the characters from these books after the events of this book. <laughs> Badly put together that sentence. But it's like, it's set at Christmas. Nice. And it would make a really good Christmas special. Ah, oh, there you go. Is all I'm saying. There you go. There you go. Uh, all righty. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, is it my turn now? I think it is, yeah. Ooh. Uh, I will cheat. You're cheating. Yes. Because I want to rewrite this fucking mess because it broke my heart and I, I'm so, going to cry. <laughs> so you're taking an adaptation that's already happened and, yes. make, and doing it again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's horrible. It's it's unforgivable. And please, I need fixing on the best okay. trilogy <laughs> that I ever read, which is The Chaos Walking by Patrick Ness. And these books are beautiful. I literally ate all three of them up in two weeks, I guess, or something like that. She ate them. I, ah! Physically. <laughs> Physically, I ate them. Uh, this is the second set she's got because she ate them. <laughs> I hate the first. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, I do have one confession to make. As that, if if you know me, you know that uh, my reading habit is as follows. At the beginning of the year, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to research what movies uh, are coming out that year that are based on books. And that's how I'm going to read books. Okay. Uh, this is what happened with this one because uh, it, it, it was uh, scheduled for... 2019 I think originally or something like that and that's when I first heard about it and I was like oh this sounds interesting obviously I read the plot and whatnot um so I was I I actively searching for it and and then I was I I read it and and I fell in love with it and it's easily one of my favorite things ever uh and then the movie came out and I cried not because it was that good it was it, it was because it was it was horrible and and it was a disgrace to these beautiful beautiful books <laughs> So I I will stop roasting that movie. Don't watch it. Please don't watch it. Especially if you haven't read the books. Uh, yes. Read the books. Like, I, no, I do. I did tell you. I, I know you did. I had hope, okay? It's like, oh. Uh, but anyway, I, first of all, this needs to be a TV series, not a movie. That's the first thing. Uh, very important because... Uh, I'm not going to compare the two, okay? I'm, I have to stop. Stop. Done. Uh, the only thing I will say, the only thing I would bring uh, from the movie is Matt Mikkelsen as the mayor. Okay, that's fair. I, I, I'm done with that. That's that's I, That was perfect casting. And, and I, I honestly wish that he could fulfill this beautiful role because I honestly believe that the mayor is one of the best antagonists that were ever written. Like, I think I already told you this once that I... I just loved uh, the whole character arc. Like you know, it's 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 tickling your mind. Like he's he's too kind. He's too good, especially in book two, uh, and and then and then in at, at the beginning of of book three, you're like, mm, this it feels it's, it feels too good to be true. I I don't know if I could trust this guy. Like I feel yeah, like it's really funny because yes. I haven't read them in a really long time. I read them yeah. like maybe about a decade ago at this point. I want to say it's been it's been a really long time. I don't remember the mayor being a nice guy. You don't. In my head, I'm like he was the villain. <laughs> I mean, yes, obviously, but but there's this arc in the story where he's like, he's manu- ma- uh, blah, another hard word for me. Manipulating uh, Todd uh, in a way that it's hmm, that's not obvious or too on the nose. I would say like it's it it's very smartly written how how he does it and you know we we later find out bless you uh, that uh, basically uh, he was using oh what is it called the sound the noise the, the noise so, sorry yes the noise thank you uh, he he mastered the noise so much that he was able to control Todd without him knowing it or without us knowing it obviously. Uh, he, and it, it, I, I thought that that was brilliant because then it turns out that yes he is the motherfucker that we thought he is <laughs> and you were right that tickling in the back of your head it was right because it's, 
he's awful uh, I do love that I'm sorry I'm looking for the because I, I, t- I definitely took a picture of it um, and put it on my Instagram as I was reading it you know years ago so I'm I'm, I'm scrolling back <laughs> through my pictures so you yeah, go, keep going go, go find it um, so yeah so definitely a TV show uh, because like look at these books these are huge books they're big, uh, like, they're, they're big they're books big, big books uh we love big books uh and you cannot lie <laughs> <laughs> my, my exact um and then second of all i would i would also say uh f- cast age appropriate actors like you know i love tom holland but no like no nah. uh it was one of the things that put me off initially when I or when I saw the casting. It was like Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. I'm like, he's meant to be 13. Yes, uh, that's one. <laughs> Although I, I, I think I told you, I even told you on this podcast that I never imagined them being like 13 or 14. Like in my head, they were more like a teenage uh, age, like you know, 17 or something like that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I would say like do the same thing. Uh, especially since we are talking about uh, a TV series like 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 Stranger Things, like let us see them grow up. Uh, I um, I would even say I would cast Finn Wolfhard as as Todd. I could imagine him being Todd. I would cast Finn Wolfhard as Todd, like season one. Season one, Stranger. But like now he's too old. <laughs> he's yeah, he's too old now. But uh, that's why I was like, uh, he was my first thought to be honest. But uh, Aha, yeah. I found it. Where is it? Oh, there you go. 2014. I read them. Oh, there you go. Uh, so eight years ago now. Eight years ago, yeah, yeah. I love these books. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh, keep one more cast member from the movie, Cynthia Erivo, who's is great. Like <laughs> we we need we need her. And and you know, uh, just it it's once again. This has so many things going for it. Like, uh, the first book is definitely a journey. Like, it's it's more like The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings because they have to get you from A to B, and 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 you know, it's it's a lot of things happen, obviously. Uh, but uh, you know, the second book is more of a of a mind game, uh, which is uh, you know a bit of a quieter uh, part uh, of the whole trilogy, but. The best part, if you ask me, I really like the second book, uh, and and you know then there comes the big conclusion in the third one, and I think it could uh, be like at least at least I would say a six season thing even. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. A lot, a lot. Like what I hated about the movie is that obviously we have this. This is on, an, on another planet. I just now realized that <laughs> not everyone read these books. <laughs> Or watch that stupid movie. I don't think that's entirely clear from when you start watching them, reading them, though. It, um, yeah, yeah, because they, they, it's it's, it's that not, is one of the things that kind of gets slowly, slowly revealed. Yeah, very slowly. But uh, so it's on another planet. Obviously, we are uh, colonizing that planet, and and that's where the noise comes in. Um, uh, that only happens to men, by the way. Uh, it's a very important part uh, of the of the whole book series, and it's. If if it's done right, it's actually beautiful, and I think that it, I have to give this a kind of a good point to the movie that I think they were on the right path of translating that into mm. into the idea of what Patrick Ness had uh, about it. But yeah, it definitely needs work on that department. I think it's it's very hard to capture that right. Yeah, uh, but uh, I will say this: that there's an alien race in there called the speckle yeah. uh and and they are very very important in the books like you know not in the first one in particular so like in, in the first I one don't, they're like no they, they only just find out about them about yeah yeah, yeah. they, they meet one in the first one yeah. i believe and then uh you know even the second one i think they introduce the fact that that there are many of them still alive around the middle-ish of the book um and uh and and they are using the noise like consciously like it's it's their it's their main communication form and it's it's a normal thing for them and you know it's it's obviously they are just trying to protect their home and whatnot like i think they even have their own language if i remember correctly none of this none of this was introduced in the movie you can't introduce it in the movie because if i remember that. correctly yes. and i'm because I'm, i like i said it's been eight years it, it's been eight years so that's it's fine. been a very long time yeah but um the way that the, the noise when it comes from humans is very like audio based 
but when it comes to the the speckle it's like pictures and pictures, like yeah. and, and they they use it to like actively communicate and like mm-hmm. show ideas and all this sort of stuff but yeah. what, what, they because they um yeah, I, yeah. I, I, okay yeah you're, you're correct yeah, yeah 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 so so you know there's there's so many things in this and i think if if could work brilliantly like the same way shadow and boon can work as 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 a fantastic series this would be amazing as a tv show like you know netflix or hbo max or anyone could literally pick this up and make it into something fantastic um and i think it it still has the potential to be to be very very uh, to be adapted into a very good series like you know now they are giving another run f- uh to the Percy Jackson books, uh, and yeah, they that's are going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, they are turning it into a TV series instead of a movie uh, trilogy or one. That was just two movies, right? Yeah, I think. Yes. Yeah, that was just two movies. I didn't see the second one. I saw the first one. I, I mean, I haven't read the Percy Jackson books, so I feel a bit bad that I like the movie because everybody really, really it. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good I, movie. I do I find it, it enjoyable. I, I, I liked it too. I'm not gonna lie. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So that's that's my cheating because I I need this I need this redone. Can I put forward a thing because yes. this is the idea I had when I read the books initially, and I think it's because of the way that because they kind of they rep, the way they represent the noise in the books is really interesting because mm-hmm. it's like uh like they, it's like all these different like fonts and they're all kind of layered over each other and mm-hmm. all this sort of stuff. So in my head, I thought that initially I thought that it was these were going to be animated because I think you could do like a really interesting thing with like how you represent the world in mm-hmm. an in an animated form as opposed to a live action one. I'm not saying a live action one couldn't work, but like I have it in my head, I feel like it would work really really well as something that was animated because I think you could represent the noise visually, um, like with in the same way that they kind of do in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it will also have to be an audio thing because it's it's called the noise. Yes. But I'm it, it, the 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 visual of the way that they have it in the book, I think, stuck with me so much that I was like, well, this is clearly something that you put into like something that you animate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Um, Spider which I just style. Maybe a little bit less like comic booky. But, yeah, like, <laughs> obviously, but uh... something along those lines. Yeah, or arcane. Hmm. That would actually, you know what? Yeah, that would be pretty. Hmm. That would be, yeah, that kind of thing. That could work. Be... Like it, it kind of, like Jinx's. Uh, uh... Yeah, is that's like it, yeah, a li- something, a little bit... something a bit like like that. Mm. Maybe at times, you know, depending on the person, a bit, a bit less violent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, it, it could work for the for the priest. Yes, the priest was bad. Maybe it's the priest I'm mixing up with the mayor, and that's what I, that's why I keep thinking of him as being. Uh, indig- maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Priest is only in the first book. I just, yeah, eight years. <laughs> I know, I know, it's fine. <laughs> I'm going off a vague memory of him. That's fine. I also read them all really close together, so I don't remember all the specifics. I mean, I really, I read them like one after the other. As I said, um, two weeks. Devoured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I love these books. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very they're very good books. I mean, Pat, you know, most of Patrick Ness's books could be made into like, I, really interesting. Like, a couple of like his smaller ones could be made made into like really good limited series. I think mm. the rest of us just live here would be a good one for that. Or, that I, that's the one I just ordered because I never read that one. So that's I a good can't one, wait. That one. I really like that one. I think that would make a really nice little. Yeah, because that one's really interesting because uh, and it it touches on something I had to figure out how to do in that. The main character of that is not mm-hmm. the whole point is that he's not really yeah, the main yeah. character in the, in the narrative yeah like things just sort of happen around him yep <laughs> um because all of his friends are like demigods basically <laughs> um so which makes you know trying to give your main character like purpose and and mm-hmm. like a drive within a narrative quite quite a task but i think it could be something that's yeah. quite fun yeah, anyway definitely yeah all right but that's it that's it. That's that's our ideas. I read cheated. the Watchmaker of Hillary Street. Read, read Chaos Walking. Don't watch those hor- the horrible movie, please. Thank you. Um, I love you. And also, Holland, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I brought them all over here. You don't need, the, but like, interesting enough, this is the other book. I finished this the other day. Um, nice. This is an entirely different story, but it's set in the same universe. Oh. Um, because Maury turns up in it as a child. Oh. And it's really interesting. interesting. I just think it, 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 I brought this out just as a point to make because it's such a deep and I think rich 
nice. environment to make some, like cool stuff in. Ooh, nice, nice. And nice. I um, yeah, her dialogue is so fucking funny. <laughs> There's a great bit in this uh, story where um, uh, Nathaniel turns around to Maury and Six, and basically goes right. Right, for the 14th time, <laughs> and it explains that the, no, the nativity is not about. <laughs> like I, say, I think the words that he uses worrying pervert. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, anyway, okay. read it. Let's end That's it. The <laughs> That's the message. Read, read books. It's good. It's very books good. Books are fun. great. Books are great. <laughs> Uh, it makes you think. It makes you, your imagination better, and uh, even your good for your vocabulary. Yeah, that's how my English evolved into. The, I mean, today was horrible, but I'm in a bad mood, so you know. <laughs> I have an explanation at least. I wrote the book, okay? Katie, Katie knows this. <laughs> she helped. You can buy the book on Amazon. <laughs> but anyway uh, still take care of yourself there's still a pandemic unfortunately um, but uh, yeah get the vaccine as always we say that and uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button <laughs> share with your friends <laughs> um, vote on Apple Apple yes vote on Apple and then we can get on the right yes no, you think it's just you rate us on Apple. Yeah. We're not. There's no voting on Apple. Oh yeah. Oh, see my vocabulary. <laughs> I can't. Great as well. I can't. Give us reviews. Yes, thank you. Follow I, us on Anchor. I can't talk. All of the above. We love you. Bye everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>